Hey guys, in this beginner's guide, I'm going to show you all of the supplies that you need to get started with pastel pencils. I'm also going to show you how I drew this bird and give you some great tips and techniques along the way that you can use to get started with pastel pencils. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have all of the knowledge that you need to get started with this medium. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. If you want to follow along with a real-time tutorial of this project where I talk you through every step of the process and then I'll leave a link to my Patreon channel in the description below. So I'm just going to run through all of the materials that I would suggest to get started with pastel pencils. So there are two brands of pastel pencils that I recommend. The first one is Faber-Castell Pit Pastels and the second is the Stabilo Carbothello. And there are quite a few brands of pastel pencil out there but I recommend these two because they have a good range of colours and they aren't too hard or too soft in comparison to other brands. So the paper that I'm working on is Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat and I highly recommend getting this paper because there are no other papers on the market that are like it. It allows you to to add many layers of pastel pencils while still having a smooth result in the end. So I'm starting out with a mid-tone grey kind of colour for my pastel mat instead of white. So working on a mid-tone colour like this can really help you see whether your values are right, so whether your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough. Whereas if you work on a white paper, it can sometimes be really hard to judge how dark or light you're doing things because in comparison to the white of the paper, it may look like your colours are quite dark. So some other tools that I use with my pastel pencils is a pencil extender and these are really great if your pencil is getting too short. You just unscrew the end, slide the pencil in and then screw it up tightly and you'll have a bit of a longer handle to hold on to. And I sharpen my pencils using a craft knife or a Stanley knife and I'll go through the reasons why I do that and actually how I sharpen it with a craft knife in just a moment. And then the last tool that I like to use are cotton tips or q-tips and I just use those to blend my pastel. So I'll show you that through throughout the process as well. So when it comes to choosing colours for your project, a lot of people seem to really focus on finding the perfect colour for each section and in reality the colour is really not that important. It's your values that matter, so making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough, that's what's most important, not your colour choice. So sometimes before I start I'll do some examples of the colours on a separate piece of paper just to see what they'll look like when I lay them onto my actual project. So I've got all the different colors swatched out for each section of the bird. So for example, I've got all of the blues that I have in my set swatched out so that I can pick the blue that matches the closest to my reference photo. And because I've only got five blues to choose from, that isn't really a lot of colors. I'm not going to have the perfect blue that matches the reference photo. So what I've done is chosen the two blues that match the values in my photo. So I chose blues that are not too dark or too light. And that's what's most important, not the fact that the blue matches the color exactly. But because I I chose a blue that wasn't too dark or too light in comparison to the reference photo, it will look just fine and it will look realistic in the end. So don't worry too much if the colours that you have don't match the reference photo exactly or if you're following a tutorial and you don't have those exact same colours, it really doesn't matter. Just find a colour that is the same value that is close enough. It doesn't need to be perfect. And if you don't have the perfect colour, like I really wanted a darker green than what my set had here, so I ended up laying a really sort of darker bluey purpley grey down and then put green over the top of that and that just made it look like a dark green. But if you are just starting out and you have no idea what colours you want to use, doing something like this can really help you decide which colours you want to use. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about really quick is fixatives. A lot of people ask me whether I use a fixative for pastel and the answer is I don't because it's actually not necessary, especially with the way that I work. So working on a paper like pastel mat with the supplies that I use, which is usually pastel pencils and pan pastel, there isn't really much pastel dust for off so I don't find it necessary to fix the piece to stop that. Most fixatives aren't actually that good at fixing the pastel onto the paper anyway. The majority of pastel artists won't use them because they tend to alter the colours of the artwork. And because I either store my pastel artwork in between glassine sheets so they don't touch any other artworks and they don't smudge or anything like that, or if I'm shipping them, I wrap them in glassine and explain to the customer that they need to get it framed and to, you know, not touch it too much and that kind of thing beforehand. Or I have them 
framed, there's no reason that I would actually need to fix the pastel pieces. It, it doesn't actually help the piece in any way. So I've actually tried a pastel fixative called Spectrafix and it works really quite well. It doesn't really alter the colors very much and it does tend to fix the pastel to the paper a little bit better, but I still don't really use it because sometimes it creates like splatters or spots on your artwork and I really just don't want to risk that. So I just don't use a fixative. But if you really did want to use one, then I'd recommend trying the Spectrafix. So you get a different answer from all different people as to how to sharpen pastel pencils. And I've tried numerous sharpeners and kind of wasted a lot of money realistically in trying to find the perfect sharpener. A lot of people recommend using a manual crank handle sharpener like these ones or the Swordfish. And I've used both of those and they actually do work really well. But the problem is that the blades get blunt really quickly. It took about three months for the blade to get blunt for me. And if you sharpen your pastel pencils with a blunt blade, it, they will just crumble. They don't work well with a blunt blade. So unless you can get a replacement blade for a reasonable price, it's really an expensive way to go. So I find that by sharpening with a blade, you get to use all of the pastel pencil so you're not sharpening away any of the pastel inside your pencil when you use a sharpener. It's also quicker in the long run because I usually shave away quite a decent amount of the wooden casing from the pastel so I don't actually have to sharpen it again throughout the entire project usually. Whereas if I'm using a manual crank handle sharpener I'll have to continuously sharpen it because the point wears away quite quickly. So I'm just going to show you how I use a blade. So I just use a really cheap craft knife that you can just snap off the blades when they start to get blunt and this cost me like a dollar from just a supermarket actually and then all you have to do is just carefully shave away the wooden casing and it does take a little bit of practice to get used to but that is literally all I do and then I use the pencil like that for most of my project. I find that the amount of detail that you can get with the pencil like this is perfect for most projects and then if I really did need a fine point you can actually just use a bit of sandpaper you don't have to use one like this that's made for art you can just use generic sandpaper with a bit of a finer grit and then you can just sand and the tip of the pencil until you get a little bit of a finer point. So when it comes to transferring your outline onto your pastel mat, I wouldn't recommend freehanding straight onto the paper because graphite pencils can tend to leave a shine which the pastel doesn't stick to very well and it also doesn't erase very well on pastel mats. So like if you make mistakes and you're changing things with the graphite and erasing it constantly, it can actually ruin the pastel mat and sometimes doesn't erase well at all. Also it can be quite hard to see the graphite lines on a mid-tone color like this. So an easy way to get your outline down on your pastel mat, if you want to freehand, freehand on a separate piece of paper like a cheap drawing paper or printer paper that's the same size as your artwork that you're going to be doing or print out your reference photo or your outline so that you can trace over that and then turn your drawing or your printout over and then rub pastel on the back of it. So in this case I'm using pan pastel but you can just use pastel pencil if that's all you have. Just rub that over the back of the outline or your drawing and then and turn it over and then when you trace over the outline you'll be able to see an imprint of the pastel onto your pastel mat. So that's a nice quick easy way to transfer your image onto your surface without damaging the paper or using graphite. So I'm starting out with the background first because I want to be able to overlap the edges of the bird onto the background. I'm also making sure that I'm layering my color slightly over the edge of the outline of the bird for that reason so that when I actually do the bird I can overlap it on top of the background so it looks like a below in that picture rather than having it look like it was cut and paste onto the background. When you're working with pastel make sure that you're using a really light hand so don't push too hard with your pencil. You want to make sure that you can add multiple layers and you won't be able to do that if you're pushing really hard on your pencil and adding heaps of pastel because it will fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly. And what I mean by the tooth is that your paper has little grooves, kind of like hills and valleys, which we refer to as the tooth. So your pastel will glide across the paper and then catch on the top of the hills and deposit into the valleys. Once your valleys are filled up, it becomes level with the top of the hills and then you won't be able to add any more layers because the surface is now smooth and there's nothing for your pastel to grip onto anymore. So make sure that you work in light layers throughout the entire process so that you're not filling up the tooth too quickly. 
You want to be able to leave some of that tooth there so you can add more layers and have a variation of colors and make it look more natural. So for this first layer, I've used a mixture of different greens and a darker bluey purple, focusing the darker colors more towards the edges and the corners. And making your edges and corners slightly darker will help focus the viewer's attention towards the center of the piece. And in this layer, I've added all my strokes in the same direction, which is kind of like an up and down direction, but it doesn't really matter too much which direction they're going in at the moment because once we've blended out this layer we'll actually add more layers on top in the opposite direction to smooth it out a bit. So I'm coming in with a cotton tip to blend out that layer of pastel. By blending your pastel in between each layer it will help push that pigment into the tooth of the paper which will help you add more layers. It also helps to blend the pastel a little bit smoother and creates a smoother transition between your colors as well and it will help with the amount of pastel dust that falls off of your artwork as well. So I'm just blending it out in small circular motions to get a smoother result. Moving on to the second layer, I'm using all the same colors that I used in the first layer, but I'm doing my strokes on a diagonal direction, which will help create a smoother finish in the end because it will even out the strokes going in the opposite direction underneath. If you find that you're resting your hand on your artwork and you're smudging it or you're getting lots of pastel all over your hand or all over your desk, you can just rest a piece of glassine over the part of the artwork that you want to rest your hand on or just any sort of paper that you have around. I like the glassine because you can see through it a little bit so you can sort of see the drawing underneath but resting your hand on something will help stop the smudging. And then once I've done that layer, before I blend it out, I'm actually going to do another layer going in the opposite diagonal direction. So that way I'm adding quite a bit more pastel in this layer so that when I blend it out again, there'll be a lot more pastel to blend together smoothly. And because I'm going for a smoother out of focus look in the background, you can add quite a bit of pastel there so that it blends out smoother. Whereas if you're working on a subject like the bird itself or anything with fur or anything like that, where you need to add more layers and more texture, then you don't want to add too much pastel in the beginning. You want to keep every layer light. But when you're working on something like the background where you don't need to add more layers on top and you want a softer result, you can add more pastel there. The reason I chose to work with the Stabilo Carbothello pencils instead of the Faber-Castell is because I wanted to do a green background and the Carbothello had more light fast greens in the set. So if you don't know what light fastness is, it's basically how long your colors will take to fade over time. So some colors are not very light fast at all and they may fade within a few years, whereas others will last over a hundred years before they begin to fade. And this varies between the brands and also the medium you're working in. So if you're working in colored pencil, you may find that a lot of brands aren't actually very light fast. Or if you're working in oil paints, for example, you'll find that there are a lot of paints that are light fast. Usually student grade materials aren't light fast. That's not always the case, but it is very common, which is why the professional materials tend to cost quite a bit more. So even amongst the sets that are professional brands, you probably get a few colors in each set that don't have a very good rating. So I personally remember remove those colors from my sets because I don't want to sell any artwork that may fade over time. If you're not too worried about the fading, you can obviously use whatever materials you like. So basically the Carbothello set had a better variety of light fast greens for me to choose from, which is why I chose those for this project. So starting on the branch, I'm coming in with a range of darker colors like browns, blues, and also black underneath the branch where the shadow is. So a lot of people say that you shouldn't use black at all in your artwork because it can look quite flat and they want you to mix your colors to create a darker color instead. I kind of agree with that. I don't think that you should use black by itself, but if you mix it in with other colors like these browns and blues, then it doesn't look flat. It looks fine. I, I use it all the time in my artwork and I don't really have a problem with it, but I don't leave the black by itself. I always mix in other colors with it or layer colors over or under it. I've also added some lighter colors on the top of the branch and I'm blending it out with a cotton tip again. And then I'm going back in with another layer with a lot of the same colors and I'm varying where I lay down those colors. So you don't have to put the same colors in the exact same spot as the previous layer. You just wanna make sure that you keep your shadows and highlights in the right spot. I'm also adding a few little details of oranges and greens to give some variation to that branch as well. And this time I'm not actually going to blend with a cotton tip. I'm just gonna use my fingers to blend because this way it's not blending the colors too much. When you do it with your fingers it just sort of gently softens the strokes and removes a little bit of the graininess rather than blending out the colors completely because I want to keep some of that texture there on the branch. 
So moving on to the actual bird, I'm starting out with a darker color, which was the same sort of dark bluey purpley gray that we used in the background and also on the branch. So using the same colors throughout different areas of the piece will really help make it look more cohesive and it will tie the piece of artwork together a bit more. So while I've got this color in my hand, I'm just looking at where else on the bird is also quite dark. So that would be the eye area, the beak, and then some parts of the tail and the wings are quite dark. So I'll Add this color there as well while I've got it in my hand. And then I'm moving on to the blue area next. So just laying down a mixture of the blues and I'm looking at my reference photo to see where the colors change slightly because some parts of the chest or the stomach are more on the green side and some are on the blue side. So I don't start on a particular color or area in my artwork for any reason in particular. So some people seem to sort of start in the eye area on every project they do or they'll start with the darkest parts or you know they have some sort of process but I just tend to look at my reference photo and and then pick out a color that stands out to me and then I'll start with that and then I'll pick the next most obvious color and then work my way through the piece from there so if you're not really sure where to start just pick a color that stands out to you and then start with that and then just work your way from there I'm not worrying too much about the details in this layer because this is a base layer that will be blended out anyway so I'll be adding other colors on top for the texture and the details so I'm trying to add colors that are a slightly darker mid-tone color so that when I go and do the next layer, I'll be able to add those lighter details on top. So you don't want to go too light in the base layer because if you start out with the lightest color that you see on your photo, you won't be able to add those highlights on top of that, if that makes sense. So try and start with a slightly darker version of what you want your end result to be so that you can add those lighter details on top. You also want to make sure that throughout the entire process, you're following the direction of the feathers with your pencil strokes. So some of the texture of your strokes will show through in the end result. So make sure that you're adding those strokes in the right direction. So you don't want to have your strokes going horizontal in an area where the feathers are more of vertical direction. You want to make sure that you're adding the texture in the right direction. Also try and vary your strokes a little bit. So although you're having all your feathers going in the right direction, make sure that you have some that sort of start or stop at different points or some that are slightly longer or like bending slightly differently. So you don't want all of your strokes to be exactly the same because it won't look very natural that way. So I recommend taping your work down with masking tape or scotch tape because that way you have a clean border around the edge of your piece when you're finished and that will help when you're storing it or holding it or moving it or framing it or anything like that because you can have something to hold on to that isn't the actual pastel part of your artwork. It also looks quite nice so if you sell your artwork and you ship it to people not framed and then when they open up the artwork at least there's this nice little border around the outside before they go and get it framed. Also taping your artwork down keeps it still throughout the process so it won't, you know, bend up at the corners or anything like that. And I also recommend taping it to a board or something that you can move because that way you can actually rotate that board to get a better angle for your hand in some positions. And when you're working in pastel, sometimes there can be a little bit of excess dust. So you can actually take that board to a bin and then tap off the excess dust in the bin rather than blowing it all over your desk. So I'm just blending out this layer with cotton tips again and I'm making sure that I'm going in the same direction as the feather detail as well because the strokes that you do with the cotton tip may also show through in the end. So in this layer I'm starting to focus more on creating the texture and the details and also getting the values right. So I'm making sure that my shadows are dark enough and my highlights are light enough. So with the way that I work, I work in layers. So I'll go and do the base layer over the entire bird and then I'll blend it all out and then I'll start the next layer. Whereas a lot of people tend to work in sections. So they'll do like the beak first, for example, and then they complete that area fully and then move on to the head and then work their way over the entire piece like that. For me, I can't really work like that. I don't remember what color or, you know, how much of that color and, and in what order I did things in. So when I go and do the next section, it doesn't quite match up. So I find that by working in layers, my piece looks more cohesive and it just makes more sense in my head. I know that some people find it overwhelming to do layers like this. So if you'd rather work on sections and then do that, it's totally up to you, whatever's easier. There's no right or wrong way to do things. 
So I chose to do this beginner's project quite small, like this is a six inch by eight inch size and I did that on purpose so that if you follow along with this project you can't actually add many details and the reason for that is that so many people focus so much on the tiny details when trying to make something look realistic and in reality it's not actually the details that make something look realistic, it's getting an accurate outline and then getting your values right. And I've said this a few times already, but making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough is more important than any detail or color. A good example of this is when you see those really beautiful, realistic paintings in galleries or museums that look realistic from a distance. And then when you get closer, all you can see is just brush strokes and colors. There really aren't any fine details there. And that's because when you stand back, your eyes tend to fill in the gaps if the artist has given the general texture or the gist of the feathers or the fur or the skin tone. And if the artist has their values correct, it will still look realistic without having all of that detail there. You can obviously add as much detail as you want to, but that's totally your choice. It's not necessary to have your artwork be super detailed if you don't want it to. And if you do want to add a lot more detail, and then you probably want to work slightly larger so that it's easier to get in those details. But for me, if I stand back at a normal viewing distance and I can't see the detail that I'm adding, then it probably doesn't need to be there. So if you're not sure if your values are right, a good way to check is by taking a photo of your artwork just with your phone and then turning it into black and white and then compare it side by side with a black and white version of your reference photo. So by taking away the color, you'll easily be able to see if your darks are as dark as the reference photo and then you can change them on your own artwork if you need to. If you want to see how I created this in real time with voiceover instruction each step of the process, you can check out the link to my Patreon channel in the description. Otherwise, there's a playlist on the screen of some other pastel tutorials that I thought you might find useful, so click on that and I'll see you over there. <laughs>